What's going on guys? Today we are taking a look at Transformers Generations Voyager Class Whirl. I picked this bad boy up at bbts.com and as of the recording of this review he is currently in stock so if you don't want to watch the rest of the re review go ahead and go over there and grab it for yourself. Now first thing I want to talk to you about is uh, well this guy is really interesting in this in the fact that this is the first figure I can remember in a long time that comes with stickers. He has stickers! Now, I have not applied them as I would just like to keep him the way he is, but I have seen plenty of pictures with the stickers applied, and he looks great with them. Now, speaking of the figure of, well, just as his self, I think it looks really good. It's not the IDW design, which I would prefer to have that design on this figure, but it works really nicely for what we've got going here. Now, you might notice that there is a slight mistransformation with the blades back here. They can swing down. I'll show you that in a minute. I just like putting them right there. That's just a personal preference of mine. Overall, I think the robot mode, as I said, is really nice looking. He is in multiple shades of blue with a little bit of yellow and red thrown in the mix. Oh, and there's black and gray as well. It's a nice color palette that works well for the figure. The canopy it's itself right there in the front is openable. I just choose not to open it because the pin that it is sitting on is, it doesn't feel real strong, let's say that much. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a couple of up-close shots of the figure. We're going to take a look at the head sculpt, and then we're going to talk about the legs, because the legs are interesting. Before we get into the figure, though, let's talk about the accessories. We already talked about the stickers. He comes with four different guns. First up is this really interesting multi-missile pod. You've got some long-range and short-range missiles here, and they could clip onto the sides of his legs. And notice, 3.5 millimeter clips. Yay! Next up is this big Aris Gatling gun. It is a nice size, well, I should say mini gun. Sorry, not Gatling gun. It is a three barrel mini gun and can be wielded in multiple positions in both robot and vehicle mode. Then there's this. I'm not sure what this is. I think it's supposed to be a camera setup. It can be wielded in robot mode very easily by taking his hands and folding them up and then just slipping this over and it will slightly peg into place and sits comfortably on his hand. Either hand can hold him. Looks pretty good actually. Very G1 accurate. Last up is the missile pod. I like missile pods. Up close and personal, his mono eye is actually really cool. Also the head design and the head sculpt on this figure is quite nice. There is a pin straight through the middle of his head that I swear is supposed to do something, but... Oh, wait, there! Okay, so I have not been able to get this thing to move, except for now, because, well, I'm dumb. You can expose some, uh... Oops. You can expose his light piping, which is right behind his crest, and the antenna will fold back along the backside of his head. But with the transformation, you could fold that forward and close up his light piping and then put the antenna forward. I like that. That is a nice addition. Overall, though, the head sculpt is just solid. It is a solid head sculpt. Within the cockpit, it looks like there's supposed to be a human in there, but that's the flight stick. It's really weird. The flight stick looks like it's molded into a human, but this whole area back here is the seat. So you could technically fit a very, very tiny little figure in there. The helicopter blades that I was referring to earlier are transformed a little bit incorrectly. Technically, they're supposed to go over the back of the figure like this, and then these two pieces are supposed to snap into place. I choose not to do that. I choose to just leave it off to the side. I think it makes the figure look a little better. It's just a personal preference. Now, despite the fact that he does have a bit of chicken leg syndrome going, he is actually quite poseable. His legs are on little ratchets, then there are swivels and hinges here at the legs. No torso articulation, because, well, he doesn't really have much of a torso. Head is on a ball joint, shoulders are on a multi-articulated ball joint, swivel just above the elbow, and then the elbow is actually a double hinged elbow for part of the transformation. And then again, his hands or his 
hands, quote unquote, open and close. Now, a couple of folks online have found a really interesting way for him to hold a sword. The Gatling gun here, turn it upside down, there's a peg hole right there. So using the Gatling gun and pegging it into his forearm, you can have Whirl hold just about any sword, uh, given the fact that it can clear the hand, that is. A very nice touch, and I'm glad either Hasbro thought of that or it's a happy accident. Either way, I'm glad it's there. I think Whirl looks even better loaded up with all of his weapons in robot mode. You've got the guns on the peg holes on his forearms, and then the runners, or I'm sorry, the uh, landing runners here on his legs can hold the other two weapons. I just love the fact that you can load this guy up with weapons, and I also appreciate that he comes with so many weapons. Now, there is a bit of controversy with the figure in about his legs. According to the box and the directions, his legs are supposed to be positioned like this. But you see, you notice here, the legs are exposed, or the inner, what you would think would be the inner leg on most toys, has the legs exposed. Well, you can have him work like this, or you could just turn the legs around, thusly, and just kind of position them so that he looks like he's leaning forward as opposed to having chicken legs. And either way works fine. He's actually a very well-balanced figure. And if that still doesn't work for you, then you could kind of get in here and pop the uh, knees forward a little bit more so you could get him a little bit balanced more. Either way, it works. I like the way he's, suppo or he's shown on the boxes. I like this way better. That's just, a again, a personal preference. But I think this looks very cool. Now, something that is not in the directions that a lot of fans have found is there is a missing direction for transformation into robot mode. He comes like this, with his arms being really stuck out quite far. What they don't show in the directions is you can push the ball joints into his body, and then they will come to a natural stopping position, giving him a much more normal humanoid look. Now, either way, I think he looks good, but I like him better with the ball joints pushed into the body. And for a quick size comparison, here is Sandstorm and Springer next to Generations Whirl. Now, you'll notice both Sandstorm and Springer seem to be a little bulkier than Whirl, but Whirl is just about the same size. And yes, using the little trick, you can hold Springer's sword. The transformation for this figure is really neat. It kind of is self-explanatory, or you could kind of guess it, but I actually had fun doing the transformation. To start off with, we're going to take the legs, or, yeah, take the legs, take the hands, and fold them up into the forearms. Now notice they are on little hinges so that both of them move at the same time. I greatly appreciate that. Then take the arms and pull them out from inside the body. Turn the figure around and take the legs and straighten them out. And this is probably the hardest joints of the transformation. So now we've got him uh, kind of standing up like this. Then we're going to reach around the back of the figure and take his tail wing and fold that up. And that'll bring the whole section up. And then pull the tail wing away from the body like this while pushing the two rotor pieces together. But don't do that. Don't push them all the way together until you fold the head up into between these two sections. Now this forms the engine compartment for the helicopter mode. Keep the tail wing down like that, and there's a specific reason why we do that. We'll see that in a second. Then take the engine compartment, bring it up, and snap it into place behind the canopy. Keeping the arms out like that, take the legs, and push them back up until they snap up underneath the canopy. Take the tail and fold it down, and it will actually peg into this section here, like so, like that. And then we bring the legs forward, thusly, and then we can fold the hands out again. I just like to fold the hands up to keep them out of the way. And ladies and gentlemen, I present to you helipod mode. No, I'm serious. This is an actual mode in the directions called helipod mode. 
they have an official Gerwalk mode. This is so cool. I love this. I think this is absolutely ridiculous, and I love it. It's a Gerwalk mode. We have our own or Guardian mode. I'm sorry for those who've never seen Robotech in its original Japanese language, but this is this is a Guardian mode whirl. <laughs> Now, there is one other thing that I wanted to show you in the Guardian mode. There are actually two, and there are two different variations. The first mode for helipod mode is the one where he has his hands. That's actually in the directions. On the back of the box is a second one where the arms are folded up. So fold up the hands and then twist the ball joints of the shoulders such that the little piece that's sticking out, I don't know how well it's showing up on camera, is pointed in towards the body, and then turn the arm so that it can fold up onto the other arm, and this should fold up, and then you accordion the forearm up over the engine intake. So we do the same thing over here. Peg this upper section or upper arm into place, take the forearm and collapse it around, and this is the helipod mode that is shown on the back of the box. Now, this is where things get fun. You can deck this guy out in all types of weaponry. So we have the chain gun up front, and then we can put the missile pods on the sides or wherever we want. So you can have a lot of play value with this guy. I prefer the helipod mode with the arms out, but you might not, so you have options. Now, to get him into full helicopter mode, Unpeg the tail from the back and actually swing it around, and it will snap into place like so. My figure is doesn't like to have the engine compartment peg into place all that much, so you just kind of have to fiddle with it. Then bring the legs and slide them all the way forward. Come down to the feet, and these are interesting feet. First, you push down on this blue heel. That will unlock it from the front and allow you to slide the heel and the front feet up into the leg, and then you peg the blue part back into place, so into the back of the leg. So unpeg the blue part, slide the foot up, and then peg that light blue part into the back of the leg again. Now, this is where things get a little weird. It, the directions had you doing had it going all over the place, and I just kind of leave it, turn it, and then it's supposed to bring slide back along the body and actually peg into the bottom of the forearm. Getting that into place is a little bit annoying. So turn it so the hinge is so that the angle of the the angled part of the hinge, the less sharp angle, is pointing forward. Turn the leg so that the good part silver is pointing up and these little wings are pointing out. And then just kind of get it in there, pegged into place. And here we have the plane mode. And by plane, I mean helicopter. I quite like this helicopter mode. It's nice. It looks like a helicopter. It looks like a helicopter in the real world, too. It's just a nice overall design. I like it a lot. Now, some folks might say I might have this mistransformed because you can see into the bits of the helicopter. And yes, you could fiddle with it, and I have fiddled with it, to actually break this hinge and have the upper legs be more underneath the canopy, you can do that. I prefer to have it like this. Again, just a personal preference. And you know what? This feels solid. This whole figure feels very solid. It doesn't feel fragile. It doesn't feel breakable. It feels solid. The only complaint I have are those ball joints in the shoulders. Those I'm a little bit worried about, but the rest of the figure is top quality. I'm, I'm really surprised, especially after the, um, the poop show that I had with Rhinox. Whirl is a really nice figure. And just to give you guys a quick look at what the helicopter mode looks like fully armed, I like it. I like it a lot. Overall, Generations Whirl is a pretty darn cool figure, and I am happy to say that. I was super bummed when I got Rhinox, and my rage was well displayed. And Whirl has turned into just a really anti-Rhinox for me, if you, if you have to say so. It's, it's a solid figure, guys. I mean, there's nothing I can really complain about. I'm 
just I'm overly impressed with the figure. I think it's a good quality figure. The plastic is well done. It's got a nice paint scheme. There's really not much I would change, if anything, on this guy. I think the only thing I would change would be the directions and saying you could push the arms into the body. And maybe these ball joints, they're, they're more like double hinged ball joints. They're very strange, but eh, you know what? I can work with them. And I do worry that the plastic on them is going to degrade over time, but well, there's nothing I could really do about that. <laughs> So overall, as I said, it is a excellent figure. I think Hasbro continues to do a good job with the Generations line, even if I think one or two of those figures have been stinkers. So as I said, I picked this guy up at BigBedToyStore.com, and at the time, like I said, at the time of this video review, he is in stock. So I suggest going over there and seeing if you can get a hold of it. It's a really fun figure, like I said, Good build quality, overall really nice. So guys, I've been Spade of the Bolt Matrix. I strongly suggest getting a hold of Whirl. I'll catch you next time.